Light the beam, because it's time for Nerdy for 30, the podcast where we talk about nerdy-ish movies for 30-ish minutes. My name is Kevin Bauer, a.k.a. The Critic's Choice. With me, as always, the people's champ, Tim Keck. If you feel it, chase it, baby. If you feel it, chase it. And today, we are diving in to another horror movie for October. And if you're talking horror movies on Nerdy for 30, you know what guest is coming up. It's been a while since we had her on. Too long, many people would say. Writer, comedian, horror movie aficionado, it's Ingrid Osby. Yay! Uh, hi, wow. Thank you so much. That was so enthusiastic and great. How's it going? Going great. Going great. Thanks for being on. Oh my God, thanks for having me again. What an honor. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about this film. Same here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into this. So we're talking Smile 2. Ingrid, I asked you to do a one-sentence take on this movie. What is your one-sentence take on Smile 2? My one-sentence take is that I hope Naomi Scott had the most restful, chill, relaxing, and trauma-free few months after they filmed this because she <laughs> kicked ass. <laughs> she just kicked ass. That is, that is what I have to say. It's unbelievable. She's awesome. She was completely, yeah. completely phenomenal in this. I yeah. like every single piece. She got to have so much fun too. I was thinking about this yesterday while washing the dishes. Not only did she give a total tour de force performance as the protagonist, she's also one of the best demon actors I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. She, she crushed it. Uh, I could not believe the energy. I could not believe the close ups. I could not believe how beautiful she was even when hanging upside down in a car. Um, <laughs> it, it was it was so cool. It was like her show. And what a powerful move to have it center on this character. Yeah, it's a big task to be a pop star. She is a famous pop star in this. And somehow they pull it off in a very convincing way. I don't know if I'm ever going to be listening to this again on Spotify, but the music seemed to work. The set seemed to work. The choreo was cool. And she just carries herself like a pop star. It's she pulls all that off and then also is a scary demon monster, which is incredible. So fun. I mean, anytime you see someone in this movie and you're like, I wonder why this person's here. It's because, oh, they have a creepy smile. That's probably a big part of it. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and she, she has does. it all. And she, she does. does. It all. And you know what? That first song that they did choreo to, uh, that when the, in the rehearsal, I thought that was a really good song. I actually think I will find that on Spotify. Um, I don't remember how it sounded, but I was like, yeah, this is a bop. I love when people do good, like good mimicking of a pop song in a movie. Yeah. Is that the one where they rotated her? Yes. And she yeah. had to be all stiff. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That looked so cool. The choreo itself in that scene was so cool. And the dancers, I mean, obviously, I think we'll talk about the, the backup dancers a lot on this, but like, <laughs> Everybody, it's it's so well done, and it made me wonder how much access the director had or somebody on the team of this movie to real pop stars, and maybe these dancers were from, like, actual pop stars and musicians, because, like, everything seems so plausible, Absolutely. and I feel like we see so many movies on this pod where, you know, somebody's supposed to be some profession and you can just tell that uh, nobody really knows how that world works. But this one, it seemed like a pretty realistic portrayal. Yeah. Was she a pop star? I'm just wondering that now. I feel like she had a song or something, didn't she? I looked up her IMDb. It looks like she had a song released. So she played Jasmine in the live action Aladdin. She also played oh, the Pink Power Ranger. Pink Ranger. The, I was going to yeah, bring that up. 2017 reboot. So she's oh. currently just going through checking off all the 90s kid crush roles. Like if yeah. she played the uh, girl, do you remember the Susie Q movie where it was like, I, I don't know if it was Christy Carlson Romano or somebody, but I remember when I was a kid, there was a movie about like Susie Q and it was like, she was like a fifties gal who died in a car crash, but then came back <laughs> as a ghost, had a romantic night with some dude. And I had the biggest like babysitter crush on her. Wait, Naomi Scott was in that? No, uh, I, oh. I think it was Chrissy Carlson Romano, but I feel like that role would be next based on the oh, other boxes yes. she's checking off. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it, we yes. need to make it like a demented Susie Q. Um, she she kicked ass. Uh, I I thought her, yeah, her physicality. I mean, I'm assuming she's like this big. Um, I'm <laughs> sorry. No one can see that. But she's so tiny, like an inch tall. But um, and I think they did. I think they definitely had like choreographers from the from 
you know, the pop world. And if not, if not like a whole host of people from that world. And uh, I'm sure they had plenty of like drug filled anecdotes from, from <laughs> some insiders. <laughs> Oh my God. Some oh, shit. Yeah. Like when she trashed her dressing room, that seemed so real. They played so well with that whole, you know, everybody thinks she's going crazy angle as well. And I, I don't know. They found a way to make so many of the things that I feel like are tropes that can go wrong in other horror movies go so right in this. Overall, across yeah. the board, I, I mean, I was just amazed by how good this sequel is. And did you, I don't think we did smile on the pod so what's real quick what did both of you think of the first smile movie tim take it away what did you think oh i i don't remember being blown away by it i feel like it was kind of cool at the end didn't don't remember it being anything special at all and this movie is like whoa this is in the rotation now i thought this was walked out of this movie theater very happy especially considering that this is the twist is spoiler alert it's all in her head (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> none of this was real the whole time, really. And that's such an infuriating twist. And this is like the only time I feel like I've ever like been like, yes, I'm in on this. This makes Sign sense. Me up. This is the most the messed way. up way this could have happened. And it's great. Yeah. A smile. The first one, I was not super blown away. I remember like laughing because I thought it was a bit silly in parts, which of course it is supposed to be silly in parts, but it just didn't get me like this one did and yeah uh this one yeah this one had like humorous moments but they were much more intentional um and uh, it was so crushing like you i knew i knew how it's gonna end i knew how it was gonna end and and but they did such a good job of stringing me along and and trying to convince me like it might not like she might get out of it <laughs> like i was like she, maybe she'll get out of this and uh man they did such a good job because i i really felt for her um and didn't expect the ending coming even though i fully expected the ending if that made sense yeah yeah it seemed like the obvious thing like of course I don't know. I thought I feel like I was kind of predicting what was I knew. I feel like I knew stuff with this where it's just based on the previous movie. It's like, well, she's a pop star. <laughs> They're going to try and do this during a show so that more people see it. Right. I thought that was going to happen immediately. And then, like, we're really veering away from that. And as soon as Gemma shows up, I'm like, no way she's real. She is fake. One hundred percent. And then by the end, I'm like, maybe she's not. I guess she's real. And then it turns out she's not real. And then they get her to the freezer at the end. And I'm like, OK, I guess she's going to battle this demon. It's going to be great. And then I'm like, OK, now that guy died. Now she's going to lock herself in the freezer and like starve to death or freeze to death, I guess. Nah, no, we're going back to what the original thing was, which is just she's a pop star. Of course, it's going to kill itself in front of all this stuff like this movie really could be 15 minutes long. And and like the other hour is just us being in her head, seeing all the messed up stuff she's thinking and dealing with and grappling with, which is fascinating because we're seeing the demon torture her. That's really the entire movie. I actually am fascinated about hearing you say that because, okay, well, full disclosure, I was like in a COVID haze and like uh, an empty theater when I saw this. Well, mostly empty. I was very far away from humans and I was like, not, I, okay. I'm just saying I could be being dumb about this. I don't think I realized like the whole time, like this wasn't real. Like, I think I thought, well, she's like being poisoned by this thing the whole time. Like, I think you got to that and I did not get to that. You know what I mean? Like, was that yeah. what I was supposed to walk away from the whole time? Like from the get, from the moment we see her after she's in Lucas Gage's apartment? No, I don't know. I mean, last time in the previous movie, right? There is a lot more give and take where it's like real stuff and then her getting possessed. Right. And, but, and I think up top, I thought it was a lot of that. And then like halfway through the movie, it's like, oh, all of this, like they did multiple like kind of reveals where just nothing was real. And it just had me questioning everything. I don't know. It also just seemed like kind of like the logical step from that. But I was, I'm saying that it's the logical thing, but I was still sucked in the whole time. I'm still invested when they cut back to her on, on the stage. My mind is blown. I don't know. Even when you see it coming, it's like, what the, what is happening? This is crazy. It's so fucked up. 
And to see her mom in the crowd after that traumatic experience where it's like, oh my God, she actually did this. It's, it was a lot. It was so good though. Oh so my great. God. It was crazy, dude. That, that entire sequence where she has to escape from the like rehab facility or whatever she's in the like, yeah. Oh my God. I place. love that. Holy shit. I was just thinking about how like like the little details as a screenwriter putting in a little detail where she gets a giant shard of glass in her foot. It's just like it's the kill your darlings mentality to such an extreme Love degree it. where it's like, yeah, you know what? Everything's going really bad for her. She's also going to fuck up her foot. <laughs> it was so intense. The whole thing where she grabs the gun from the security guard was wild. It kind of reminded me of like some of the shit that ends up going down in Happy Death Day. Where you're so on board and you're so amped up with adrenaline by the time it happens that you're like, yes, girl, do it. Get out of here. <laughs> um, that Yeah, I, I think all that stuff is so fun and so extreme. And then the twist ends up being so good that I think the partnership of those two things is why it doesn't feel like a slap in the face when it's revealed to be like a, a dream sequence effectively. Because it's like, I mean, that yeah. was a hell of a dream. Yeah. It was crazy. And, it, you know, the worst part of the dream reveal, though, is that Gemma wasn't real because oh, Gemma is no. maybe the the best best friend ever portrayed in cinema. Right. She's just like such a ride or die immediately. I was like, people are going to oh be God, all Gemma. I feel like the Internet's going to love Gemma. D- just, Dylan Galula, right? Is that am I saying that right? I think so. Ooh, no way to know. Um, Dylan Galula. Yeah. S- crushed crushed it. it. And wait, OK, Naomi Scott's character's name. I'm I'm blanking right now. Sky Riley. Sky Riley. Yeah. Sky. Yes. Yes. Okay. I knew Gemma was not real the whole time. I'm getting the names confused. Um, I knew Gemma was not real the whole time. Uh, I really wanted her to be real though, because you need that. <laughs> you need that ride or die when you're going through shit. And to hear her be like, "Why would I call it?" Like, I haven't talked to you in a year. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I had to take a few days. Like, that's the normal response. Like, of course, of course, the crazy not real response is her being like. Oh yeah, girl, I'll be right there. Um, oh my gosh, can we talk about? And I, Kevin, you did allude that we would come back to this. The dancers in her apartment in in that sequence was so incredible when they're crawling toward her and doing their moves with their smiles. Oh my god, so frightening! I would love to know what you thought about that. Top ten all time for me, like top ten <laughs> sequence. This is holy fucking shit it's so funny from the trailer i'd pinned it as like oh yeah what an interesting thing to pick up on is how horrifying these weird like music video choreography things are if you think about them for a second and then the actual (laughs) tension of these people like very slightly changing their positions and their gaze when all of them all their heads turn to look at her at once every time she's moving around the room holy shit oh my god deal with it It's awesome because they give you the comparison between her. They show so much of her actual choreography that when it comes to this, the slight, you're right. The slight tweak of it makes it all just seem way scarier. You know, like the first choreography thing was like them picking her up and like controlling where her body goes. And then they, they pick her up and then they, she, they're just controlling her body again. Like, it's crazy. It is also, as soon as it started, I was like, oh, this is why you make smile too. This is what you do with a movie called Smile is you have a bunch of people smiling their asses off, like crushing her in the the apartment. It was it was so cool and so specific to this movie and this type of horror that it was just it was just an A plus scene for me. Um, I think you hit on something really uh, a really good point, which is. I thought going into this, why would you make a smile too? Like why on earth would you make like, what are we just going to see the same thing? And I love how much my expectations were like totally shattered and like, like they just created something new and different with it. Um, Like that's, that's everything you want in a sequel. It's like, yes, please take this in a direction I wasn't expecting, but it still remained true to what it set up in the first one. Um, I loved it. I love, I loved I love that. Uh, it's so not, you never see a sequel that just blows it out of the water and is arguably a lot better than the first one like this. Oh, While we're phenomenal. talking sequels, when we get a, a smile three, because we've got to right? this one's a hit. Oh, man, uh, it's going great. 
so far we've had two protagonists. Both of them have been dead basically the instant they get infected. Do you think that happens again in Smile 3? Do they end up killing the their like infected host again? Or do they figure out a way to overcome it? It seems like, or do they just expand on the world that they've created where an arena full of people watch this and could now be possessed by this oh. creature? I mean, they gotta oh. go there, right? They if, if like they've got that's to. what happened and they now a stadium full of people is is possessed by this thing. Um, I feel like they gotta explore that. The other thing is <laughs> that lovely man who tried to help her that I maybe was not real. Like, how do we explore that? Like if, if we have someone who knows how to stop it, like how much credence do we give that? Is that, is that really a thing? Can that actually happen? (laughs) Are they going to stop this in mass? Also the demons, the one that planted that suggestion in her head. So how do we know it would even actually work? Right. Right. That's, that's That's the thing. Because we probably can't trust that. Again, <laughs> it's a total mind fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, I, I wonder if they go like, Tim, you haven't seen When Evil Lurks, have you? Ingrid, have you seen that one? No. Yes. Yeah, I can definitely see some overlap. Yeah, just how like, uh, that's the one I was telling you about this past weekend, Tim, where it's like, it, you kind of get the feeling, they never say this happened, but you kind of get the feeling that the world already ended. Like everything just feels so dark mm-hmm. and grim and desolate. And the way that they treat the way they treat uh, like a demonic infestation or a demonic possession the same way we would treat like, you know, like a, a smallpox outbreak or something <laughs> is like it's crazy. It's like we got to deal with this immediately. But also, you know, it's a demonic possession. This is nothing new for us. So I wonder if they do kind of just go into a world that's been ravaged by this thing. I would love, I would love to see that. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't think you can open it up to all of that possibility and then, and then bring it back down to like one to five people. I don't think. Definitely. Right. Um, Especially when this movie starts right after the first one. Yeah. Yes. Which by the way, did we figure that out? Did I we did figure not. Out the, did you? What's the first scene? I didn't I didn't realize it. I know I know it said six days later, so I'm like, this must be after the first one. I didn't remember this guy at all. I feel like I remembered nothing from the first smile. I remembered him, and that's it. Like uh Joel, I guess was his name. I, I, that's all I don't remember. I just were the actor. Uh and that's it. I mean, Kevin, do you remember any of this from the first? somewhat yeah so what i'd pieced together i i thought i understood it perfectly and then we were talking about it afterwards and we realized a massive plot hole that maybe you could help us with so he was the guy who was trying to help out the protagonist in the first movie and in the end of the first movie i think she had realized that the demon had made her call him to that cabin without her realizing or something so he witnessed the thing at the very end where it crawls into her mouth and then she kills herself um, so then it seems like he would then be infected by this thing. And because he was a cop, it seems like he'd just gone into some old case files and picked some bad people to pass this thing on to, and then ended up giving it to Lucas Gage by accident because he didn't know he was in the room. But, um, what we didn't realize was how did this thing get to Lucas Gage? Because this guy it you know tends to only pass from person to person if the person oh. kills themselves in front of it but in this case he didn't kill himself in front of lucas gage he just got no. hit by the car right which would seem in front to, of like another guard or something yeah but it would see he said it wasn't intentional so that would seem if we're believing the like doctor who wanted to kill sky riley's theory that would seem to suggest that he would have just gotten rid of the demon right then and there because he didn't like it seems like the demon is theoretically only passed along when somebody kills them. Right. Yeah, maybe it's just there's them some... dying. Or do they have or to kill maybe, them? Maybe there's more possession that was going on with that. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I'm allowing for there to be a, a, a reasonable explanation. I don't know if there is, but like, we don't know what was going on with that car. We don't know whose perspective we're kind of supposed to be keeping an eye on. Maybe there's some explanation that the filmmakers would have for that. 
that we, but it did seem to be explicitly killing themselves. Yeah. So yeah. that didn't, we didn't quite see that, but who knows? Cause if we didn't actually see the moment of impact when the car hit whoever <clears throat> at the beginning, right. We saw it right. went off screen and then, so maybe there was something in that. <laughs> maybe It's like, Oh, I survived the car crash. Time to kill myself. Yeah, if he oh, steps man. in front of the car, does that count as him killing himself? I don't know. Right. And then also, I guess what was his plan, though? So he's going into this house, mm-hmm. and he's going to kill himself in front of bad guys. So now the bad guys have it. Mm-hmm. And I guess they deserve to die, but isn't that just going to keep it going? Yeah, it's going to pass he, it on. He's not even really trying to kill the thing. He's just trying to get rid of it in front of somebody who is deserves it i guess yeah i think his intent is basically like the odds are higher that he passes it along to them and then they have a network of like bad people they can pass it on to as well yeah or maybe they they hope he hoped they never would leave the cabin and it would be self-contained or something you know Hmm. what i mean (laughs) maybe (laughs) if he was being trying to be such a good guy he's like maybe they'll never leave and they'll all just die in here and then it won't spread (laughs) Or you, sh- you shoot that guy, he's dying, he's bleeding out, then you kill yourself, then he sees it, then it goes into this guy, and that guy dies. Oh, there you go. Well, hey, that's another plan for Smile 3, is maybe that's another plan for Smile 3. Instead of, like, freezing yourself and shooting yourself in the, the jugular, yeah. it might be easier. But then what's-his-face could have seen it, the drug dealer guy, he was still there. Yeah. So if this guy does that, then he is going to watch the, the bad guy die. And then he'd have it. I don't know. I don't know. Who am I to tell these guys how to rewrite? This movie was great. That brings up the next biggest plot hole that I have with this movie, which is how do all of us know who Lucas Gage is by name? I know. I know. How did Lewis this Fergoli. I had to look up the character name. Lewis Fergoli was the guy who played. Uh, you know what? How do how do I think it's White Lotus. Oh, that he caused that? this. Yeah, um, but he's so good at playing uh, like a coked up maniac. Um, And I thought Mm -hmm. he crushed like it was, first of all, so nice to see someone who like I've seen before in other stuff just have this smaller role and just knock out of the park. Um, Again, like the casting. I just love when a horror movie that could go south in so many ways has great casting. Like, I don't know who the casting director was, but they did such a good job, like stellar cast. Um, and Lucas Gage, amazing, uh, amazing role for him. hundred percent household name, Lucas Gage. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a moral combat character. I think it might be Kevin. Yeah. That he has a really cool name. That's why we all just know it. It works. I mean, yeah. something made it stick. It's incredible. When we were trying to figure it out at the beginning of that, uh, or after we saw it, he was the only person that I was able to refer to by name as an actor. And then even in that moment, I was like, how the fuck do I know this guy's oh. name? And how does Tim know his name, too? And then you named right, right. him at the beginning of this. And I, I was like, the oh, same shit. Ex- same experience. As soon as I saw him, I was like, Lucas Gage. <laughs> I've seen this guy in one other thing. Um, I have read some gossip blog stuff about about him. Ooh. So maybe that's Ooh. why it's in my head. Yeah. Juicy. But, uh, Good stuff. Bad stuff. Juicy. He had he's a very candid person about uh having gone through a difficult time and had like sort of a whirlwind romance and short-lived marriage that uh may or may not have something to do with <laughs> substances. <laughs> and that's oh, yeah. over. And he basically just had like said in the last year or two, like, yeah, I uh, married this guy. It was crazy. I was kind of like manic for a long time and now I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so anyway, I feel like he, he clearly has some experience with a character kind of acting like balls to the wall. And that's probably why he gets these roles. Oh, he also famously was the, the, the COVID, uh, audition guy who said who got called out for a shitty apartment by the casting uh guy do you remember this video yeah oh holy shit he's like i know my apartment sucks but hire me and i can i can get a better one or something like that yeah oh that's so funny wow so i guess i know everything there is to know about him but i literally (laughs) have never seen him in anything but this and white lotus i promise 
Well, speaking of incredible acting performances, why is Drew Barrymore in this movie? I've, oh my God. I feel like she's turned heel, right? Like, I'm just out on Drew Barrymore now. I'm tired of it. Her interview just sucks. Like, I don't want to have, like, heart-to-hearts with Drew Barrymore. It just seems like kind of like a joke that she has, like, this show, and, like, we're all in on this bit where we're, like, humoring her because she was great. I used to love Drew Barrymore. You know, right, she did right. she used so much her. for me. Yeah. And now I'm just kind of tired of it. Wasn't she like an addict during COVID and stuff too? And like, kind of like bully were, writers yeah. into coming back to work and stuff. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just tired of Drew Barrymore. She's bad at this interviewing thing. She doesn't really fit in this movie. I don't want to see her having a heart to heart. Really. If you have a traumatic life incident where a loved one dies, you were almost dead. You're going to go to Drew Barrymore to get your story out. I don't know. I don't believe it. What, you know, what is that? People do crazy things. Yeah. I think she had some questionable possible scab behavior during the, the strikes. Uh, and I, yeah, huge, huge Drew Barrymore fan. I, I, in the past, I, it's to the point where like, I'm triggered when I see her touching celebrities. I'm like, you've got to yeah. give them space. <laughs> Just give them some space. Stop touching them. Um, She's sitting on her feet, breathing in their face. Touching, yeah, you moving know, their actually, hair out of the way. I think she kept her distance better in the in this movie than she does on her show. Um, yeah. I, she's obviously a, a deeply caring person in many ways uh, and maybe not some others, but um, I, yeah, I would have loved to see like, who, who would you have loved to see in that, in that role in the show? Like smart uh, list, get the smart list guys. The in sm- there. <laughs> Jesus. Smart list guys. <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying to think oh of like God. a big podcast. Alex Cooper. Have her sit down with with Alex Cooper Actually, from the Call Her Daddy pod. You know what? That would have worked, but that paycheck I think would have demanded Smart list and Alex much. Cooper. That that I think Drew Barrymore probably at this point has so much money that she's like, you know what? I'll do this at a discount. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Alex Cooper is in her like million dollar, you know, podcast deal era. Yeah. Yeah. But she's, that would have been she thinks she's too big for small. I think yeah. I think podcast is the way to go. I think what you gotta do is you gotta find an overlap of a podcaster who also desperately wants to do uh, movie roles, and then you can toss in a little bit of history of substance abuse for something for the character to relate on. I say we tap Mark Marin for this. I just want oh. Sky Riley sitting oh, across from Mark Marin, Mark Marin being like, "Who are you guys? Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and every fifteen-year-old in the theater is like, "Who's this guy? <laughs> this weird <laughs> abrasive man." Who's this man? <sighs> Although you know what, Kelly Clarkson would have been a good one. Kelly right? Clarkson would have been so much been better. Great. Oh my god, they Damn. could have a song together. Holy I hope they shit. pitch that. I hope oh they try. Oh my god. And then they sing Since You've Been Gone together after she oh gives this terrible god. news. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, oh I would man. watch. Oh, I do wish we would have gotten a, like a Drew Barrymore take on the like smile when we go into the practical effect monsters at the end. A Drew Barrymore take, like Drew Barrymore with the demon eyes would have been so fun and funny. Yes. Those yeah, are, that would have uh, been great. I want to shout that out as a thief for this movie, too. They did it in the first movie. I was mostly out on the first smile. I thought it was Deese. And then at the very end, anytime you reveal that there really is a paranormal entity and you show me a monster, I am in on your movie. I'm in on monsters. And so when they revealed that at the end, but they held it all the way, I was so stoked and so excited for the second one. And this this team is masterful with this, where the whole movie, they're not showing you anything too crazy. And then mm-hmm. the end of that third act, the floodgates open up and you see the craziest shit you have ever seen in your entire life. Oh, those eyes will Did stay with me. Did we have anything like that in the first movie? Uh, refresh my memory. Did we have a demon? We did, yeah. Uh, At the, the very okay, end. So I, but it was nothing like this one, right? Like this one was like a mega. Or It was also very same? big. Yeah, wow. it was huge. It was like okay. 10 feet tall and it pulled her mouth open and climbed in. Cause I mean, my, her mouth was open. Okay. My jaw was it's on the back. ground. It's creepy. Oh my God. 
Well done. Um, yeah, I I just Googled a picture of the, the demon uh, to remind myself. For some reason, actually, that didn't scare me as much as I was like, oh, co- the practical effects aspect of that. I just get so excited. I'm like, oh, cool. Like how many rows of teeth? <laughs> I was just seeing all the rows of teeth. Yeah. I was just like, that's so cool. How'd they do that? Um, so I totally blurred that out. I, I don't want to revisit the first one, but I, I think I might revisit the ending of the first one just so I can kind of put the whatever pieces there are to put together. Um, uh, a question. What do we think her boyfriend was actually like in this movie? Like Sky's shitty boyfriend who died. Do, do we think like they were both just coked out celebs and he was absolutely a shithead? Do we think they're mutually shitheads to each other? I think mutual shitheads. Yeah, because we're not given much. She grabs the wheel and drives them off the road and kills them. So (laughs) I don't think I think you feel like shithead could be thrown her way for sure. Uh, He's also saying some pretty terrible things and giving me shithead energy. So either they're addicts, they're addicts. We don't know what's they don't mean it. Addicts addicted to substances and each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what was his story? Like, what was what was he like? What was his? He was an actor. Right? An actor. He was an actor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would love to like have had seen some nod of what kind of films and shows he was doing. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that his so caliber. Fun. You know what I mean? Because she <clears throat> obviously was like this. She was almost like a, a sort of like young Katy Perry cross with like. Charlie XCX vibes, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, the early Charlie, early Halsey. Yeah, Mm. yeah, yeah. Um, But with the capacity to have these like banner stadium shows, it was cool. It was very. Also, I agree with her on that outfit. I didn't like that outfit that she didn't like. You know what I mean? That showed her scar. The scar thing, fine. I don't care that the scar is showing. The outfit wasn't for me. Yeah. No, the outfit was fun. It was all sequency. It was all these different colors. It was a good one. Like the, it wasn't her the best. Wings. Mm. The wing things and the... I mean, she looked incredible. But if I were her, I'd, I'd also tell my mom that I don't want to wear. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. it would have been hard I my for mom her. I don't want to wear stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Still. <laughs> daily occurrence. Still, Still every day. <laughs> I feel like that outfit would have been my biggest problem was with those like hip flares. I don't think she could have just yeah, like let flares. her arms rest at her side. No, she yeah, she would have had to do a lot of like hands at her hips yeah. or wherever. So stiff forward or back like a Lego person, just like very weird stuff there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh, uh, little, I don't know, aspects of the celebrity culture. When did you realize that the Voss water was going to be important to the plot? Oh man, <laughs> the the it's so funny because there. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that is a good question because I do think it took me a bit to realize it would be important to the plot. <laughs> the the thing that I think the the other people in the theater like caught on to before even I did was the absurd amount of times they were showing it within the first like few minutes. <laughs> and I heard some sort of response like at the other end of the theater, and I was like, they're thinking it too. This is like so egregious. Like we've got to stop showing the boss water so much. <laughs> and she and chugs it. Oh, I wanted to know how yeah. they were doing that. There's no how way she's drinking all that? that water. It's got to be like on the it. other side of her mouth. <laughs> you try we should all post we'll post attempts of us trying to chug Voss. See if we can get yeah, a sponsor. I'm going to get one of those like sodium deficiency things for like drinking too much water. Oh my yeah. God. Um, yeah, that was incredible. I don't know. Kevin did. Was there a moment where we were like, oh, it's become important now. We This Voss is important. There was like, yeah, does it pay off really? I, I mean, I thought, well, they said that. Yeah, they said that uh, her counselor, when she was in rehab, told her that anytime she had a feeling of being out of control or a feeling that she wanted to use, she should drink a full glass of water. But that person's talking about like an eight ounce glass of water. She's sucking down like 24 ounce Vosses. And I mean, right. the way she's chugging that shit, we could do 
we probably could start an actual TikTok trend, like the Smile to Voss challenge. <laughs> Just oh, oh my god, and Voss it. would like love it. Oh my god. Uh, I don't think uh, you can I I mean chugging that much water, that, that would just suck. But it seemed like she was really doing it. It really did seem like it. And I, I'm so curious. There's Maybe no it's way. somewhere out there that they talk about how they did it. Um it was definitely the most Voss water bottles I've seen since I think succession. Um <laughs> and I, I just it was like also so, it, really incredible that they justified an ad decision <laughs> so well like they just made it a, a part of the movie i don't know how to quite explain it because i think all egregious ads like this are just by nature really irritating and this one actually was so over the top that i just became used to it and and no longer thought about that it was the boss water, which I think is them doing their job so well. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they did. I just, I don't know, really good ad placement and also the most obnoxious ad placement <laughs> that you end up just accepting and it no longer matters. <laughs> it's like great. It's great ad placement because it like the, the, the brand itself is obnoxious enough that you're just like, yeah, she's a pop star. She has fridges full of this stuff. She's just, she's just ripping into it like without a care in the world. And the way she chugs it is so aggressive. And then, and they reveal that psychiatrist thing, like, Halfway through. Right. So we've already watched her chug like five bottles of this stuff. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, oh, my God, that's it. She is having a nervous breakdown when she's doing this. Uh, it it's super a testament good. to her acting again that those moments as Voss forward as they were, like we weren't taken out of it because we were like so committed and the just how well it was shot. I was just like, it was so stupid that you'd think every moment you'd be like, are you are you kidding me with this water? And I <laughs> I just was like it was really compelling the film, so I I didn't care that much, which I loved. It is nuts. There if now you... I have a fridge full of Voss. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> Voss really got to us all. Uh, I think like if you describe a lot of the parts of this movie, it sounds like it would be a bad movie on par with Troll Two or The Room. Like there's a scene where she's attacked by backup dancers in a choreographed attack oh. in her apartment. There's a scene where a uh, fan strips naked in her apartment and charges at her. Like the, all the water chugging. It's like, this sounds like they're yeah. doing bits, but somehow they turned out. I, I think like it's one of my favorite. It's definitely my favorite horror movie of this year. It's maybe my favorite horror movie of the past five years, it, it maybe since it follows. Oh, I really love this. Wow. Maybe all time. Oh, wow. Actually, no, high praise. You know what? It follows is such a good mention. I think with with this one, I don't know. There's something about the creep factor that I think the, both of these do so well. That's a good shout out. Um, just that sort of like lingering, like, uh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, oh, that's one with the sequel coming up too. All we know about is this is, uh, is that it's called They Follow. So they nobody follow. sucks. Yeah. That sucks. I don't want to see it. Yeah, follows. it's like, but see, that's what we thought about Smile, but also It Follows was like perfect. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it Follows is like cult classic. Smile is like begging for a sequel, I feel like. It just feels. I mean, this is this is about as good as you can do with a with a horror movie sequel like this, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. What a win for, like, uh, I don't know. They're so rarely good, good sequels. Kevin, was it you that we were talking about the Hell House? Mm, mm -hmm. uh, and you were talking about the, one of the sequels and how, like, <laughs> silly that <laughs> the concept was, um, which I actually loved. I, I mean, I love the whole thing. It was it was so scary. But but. It's funny that how much better this one is as a sequel um, compared to something like that. And compared to like, I mean, have there been other horror movie sequels that have been like actual like horror jump scare, gross horror movies where the sequel has like crushed it? I really I mean, we covered the Halloween about. movies on the pod. And like the second one is uh, just a, <sighs> they just slide down. Yeah. Drastically. 
I think yeah. it's I think it's an unusual occurrence for sure. And yeah, this movie the whole win. time there's jump scares. I mean, it's you're invested the whole time, even when it's just a little thing like this guy's naked. The way they have the camera moving around her, it was like stressful. I kind of wanted to rewatch the first one, but I I was like, I don't know if I'm in. I don't know if I want to do that back to back. Right. It's just it was I was right. so stressed out after the second one, after Smile 2, leaving the theater, just the way the camera is moving. They're twisting stuff upside down like you're always in suspense. Oh, and all that. It's great. It was so yeah. fun. But yeah, I needed a palate cleanser after that. What was your palate cleanser? Did you did you find one? Probably house. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I watch awesome. a lot of house lately. <laughs> like I Dr. don't know house? if I had a palate cleanser. Dr. House. Like Dr. No, House. That's a good that's one. I've been going through my the background recently. I feel like I had another one too. But uh yeah, I don't know. I don't do palate cleansers. I just raw dog <laughs> the nighttime <laughs> fear after. <laughs> <laughs> um oh wait, I did have one more question that I wanted to bring up. Yeah, hit it. How much force, since we don't see it, how much force do you think it takes to shove a microphone through your skull? I thought that was really impressive. <laughs> a lot. A lot. She's strong. <laughs> was it through her eye or was it through the side of her head? I forget. It was, it might've been both, but it was, I remember like the, the end of it was like, or the, the top of the mic was like sticking out through there. Um, That'd be insane. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Cause but that thing's so strong. I mean, it's holding like a 45 pound plate. Like it's nothing to smash this guy's head in. Sure. Right. Like it, this creature. Very powerful. I will say too, I went to a, uh, I went to a Maggie Rogers concert the day after we saw this movie <laughs> and it was like very much, nice. you know, it was at Madison square garden and it was like, there's so many people around all these cheering fans <laughs> and she's got the stage there that she kind of can walk out to the front on and seeing that immediately after seeing the finale of smile Two was a little jarring. It was like, Oh, abs- I'm sure that's like unsettling. You're looking around. Like, is anyone looking weird? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> is anyone going to try and recreate this at a pop concert? <laughs> is Chapel Roan going to stand and just going to walk out <laughs> on stage and pretend to put a microphone through her head? Oh, my God. Oh, it would be a killer costume, though. That'd be so it would be a wild So costume. I, I hope we see that. Yeah. Great prop. A Halloween show or something. Perfect, man. Yeah. I'll just be the demon. It'll take me. <laughs> yeah. It'll take me six months to make the outfit, but I'll do it. <laughs> animatronics and everything mm-hmm. i'm yeah. just gonna be a fridge full of boss just pass now Voss water stuff oh, for great party boss actually bottles. just being one large singular Voss would be great for you kevin because just, of your height <laughs> <I can make laughs> that happen. just get like a little yeah. thing like a little plastic sheet wrap myself in it yep yep yeah hell yeah dude Rock and roll. Perfect costume. Ingrid, thank you so much for being here. This is a blast. Oh my gosh. Thank you for yeah, having thanks me. Thanks for this doing this. Absolutely. The Anytime best. you want me back, I'm here. Um, this is my passion, these movies. <laughs> these films. Yes. Oh, that call will come. I saw we're we're uh, already pretty much done with like our our movie slate for the rest of the year, but I did just see yesterday there's a new creep movie coming in early November. So I'm fucking <gasps> no. fired up for that. November 15th, <laughs> the creep tapes. It's coming. It won't be on this pod. That's maybe next so year. So exciting. Yeah, maybe next wow. year. Well, thanks for the heads up. And thank you so much for having me. I hope you have a smile filled week, a boss filled <laughs> week ahead. Uh, may, may no all backup your water dancers. Be boss. <laughs> yeah. And all your smiles be big. <laughs> God damn, I love it. <laughs> Listener, what do you think? Did you love Smile 2 as much as we did? Let us know. Send us an email. Nerdy430 at gmail.com. We'll read it on the show. We'll be back here again next week with the scariest movie of our entire October slate. It's Venom The Last Dance. We'll see you then. Until then, <laughs> stay nerdy, everybody. Bye. Stay nerdy. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Ingrid.